Hi everyone, John Davenport from fullgropathy.com and today we're going to look at how I edited this kayak under the stars photograph for you. Um, I'll put a link below to the original photo. This won't be exactly the same. I'll try and get it pretty close, but we're going to edit it completely from scratch again. So um, we'll see how it goes. So anyway, the basic theory behind editing this photo, when I first saw it, I knew immediately that I was going to have to break it into two pieces. You have your sky and you have your foreground element. And both of these are going to need to be edited independently of each other because of how they're exposed and how I envision the final photo to look. Lightroom makes doing that extremely easy. Um, you have this adjustment layer on the top right, um, just under the histogram. If you click on that, it'll open this um, set of sliders here. Now, what you need to do is you simply just click anywhere you want to edit. And then you'll just paint in a whole area. And this whole area will be affected by those sliders on the right. Now, the great thing is that once you're done with one zone here, so like, Basically, I want to edit the top here as one, and then I want to edit the kayaks as another zone. So I'll just come back over here and I'll click on new. And the kayaks will then get their own highlighted area down on the bottom of the photograph. Um, so one thing to note, and I'll put a link below if, if you want to read a little bit more about raw photography is that this is a raw file and that allows me to to do this um, because of how much data raw files save. If this were just a simple JPEG, you wouldn't really be able to recover quite as much of this detail as I'm doing here. Um, and that's why I shoot in raw. It allows a lot more freedom editing the photo. It does almost require that you edit your photos, but um, I kind of enjoy it, so that's that's why I shoot in RAW. Um, if you want more info, like I said, there'll be a link below to a post I wrote a little while ago. Um, so anyway, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with the sky. So if I hover over this little dot that I put in, you'll see it, it'll turn red. And that basically tells you that that's the area that you're going to affect with this dot. And these sliders over here on the right are what are going to affect that area. So um, right now it's a little bright, so I'm going to drop the exposure just a little bit and I'm going to up the contrast. And like I say in basically any video that I've ever talked about or any, any even talking to people in person, when I edit photos, it's a lot of guesswork. It's, um, I mean, I know what these sliders do and I know how to make them work for me, but each photograph is going to be different. and. Um, each one is going to require a different setting. So I never really remember anything that I set a specific photo to. And um, I, I certainly don't just have like a default setting for every photograph that I use. Um, sure, some of them are very similar, but each one I usually just start from scratch and I just move the sliders until I uh, get an image that I like. Um, so basically, like I said, it's just it's just a, a bunch of moving the sliders around. So that's pretty good for the sky right now. And then I'll just click down on the bottom here. If I hover over this again, you'll see it'll turn red and that'll tell you what will be affected by this particular dot. And once again, if I change these sliders, as you can see, they'll affect just the bottom half of the photograph. And um, uh, one of the big things with this photograph that I knew as soon as I saw it on my computer was that all I really needed to do was bring the stars out a little more and make make them pop, add a little color to the sky because um, I don't know if you know this, but it's um, if you up the saturation in your um, nighttime sky photos, you can get a lot of that purple and a lot of that deep blue in with your stars and it, I think it looks really cool. Um, and then down at the bottom, I really wanted to bring in the saturation of these kayaks as well. So I kind of had all of this envisioned when I was creating this photograph in my head. And um, this was all going on when I was out there taking this photo um, that night. 
So anyway, once I get this kind of where I want it to be, I'll then close down the adjustment layer and I'll come down here to the global adjustments. And these, sometimes I'll just check the white balance. So here I think I like um, the auto white balance a little better than the custom. And then I may just, you know, t tweak and see if I can do some small adjustments here with the um, overall levels of everything. And then one final thing that I'll do um, is Lightroom has, uh, it's an okay, I mean, it's not great, but it, it does an okay job for noise reduction. And since this was shot at uh, 1250 ISO, there is a little bit of noise, especially since it was after I shot um, all the photographs for a time lapse. So my sensor was a little hot and that adds a little more noise to it too. So uh, anyway, I just, I just bring a little noise reduction in, not a whole lot, because you still want to be able to see all the stars. And a lot of times the little white dots of the stars will get mistaken for noise and then you'll lose some of your stars. Um, so anyway, uh, that's basically the gist of it. As you can see, it, it doesn't look exactly like the one I posted on my site, I'm sure, but um, it, it's probably pretty close. I'll, I'll post this one um, maybe as a re-edit or something down the line. But anyway, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe by clicking subscribe above and please click the like button below. It helps uh, more people see my videos. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye.